Good evening, everyone. So this is Lucy. She's three years old, and she really wanted a chocolate sundae. So she asked her mom, but her mom said no. So she threw a temper tantrum. Now this is Jack. He also really wants a chocolate sundae, but he's 65 years old. So he asks his partner if he can get one, but she says no. And he gets angry, saying that she doesn't respect his needs. He throws a temper tantrum. So it makes sense to think of individuals in terms of growth and development. But can we do the same to understand humanity? Because Lucy, she's three years old, we think it's normal for her to throw a temper tantrum. But when Jack has a tantrum, we expect him to grow up and control his emotions. We expect him to be more mature. Can we think of this when we look at history and when we look at humanity? I'm an adolescent, so I know a few things about being one. And one thing I notice is that in our world today, there are many signs of adolescence. Let me give you a couple examples. Trying to find a sense of identity and rebellion. Teenagers are always trying to find a sense of identity. We want to figure out who we are and where we fit in. Many social movements in the world today are also built on defining and asserting identity. On one hand, we have movements like Black Lives Matter or I Don't Know More that raise awareness of our diversity. And on the other hand, we have various nationalistic and extremist movements that reject our diversity. Teenagers are also rebellious. As we gain the freedom to make our own choices, we use it to challenge authority. Donald Trump rose to power on an anti-establishment message. And many social movements are also all about protests and resistance. So we can say that the world is like it's in a stage of collective adolescence. But teenagers are expected to grow up, so we should expect humanity to as well. But what does this mean? What would a more mature world look like? One way of measuring maturity is how much someone moves from me to we. How much they move from being focused only on themselves to showing concern for others. Let me give you an example. Let's say I have to babysit my neighbor's toddler. The three-year-old is so self-centered. He only focuses on what's directly in front of him, and that's all he wants. So if he sees a ball at the, top, at the top of the stairs, he'll forget about the stairs, go for the ball, and then tumble down. He can't even take care of himself. And that's where I come in. As the babysitter, I'm expected to be mature enough to take care of myself and the toddler, at least for a short amount of time. This broadening of interest also happens on the collective level. In the past, we used to identify ourselves based on our family or our town, and then our city or country. Now, the unit of identity is global, and many of us see ourselves as world citizens. Achieving global unity, however, is going to be a defining challenge of our collective maturation. And it involves all of us as individuals. It requires us to tap into our capacities to know, to love, and to choose. First of all, we have to understand that our world is interdependent. Just like the human body, when one part suffers, the whole is affected. Many of humanity's biggest problems, like climate change, population growth, economic development, disease, war and conflict, many of these problems require us to tap into and recognize this interdependence in order to come up with real solutions. This interdependence also means that we have to have concern and care for others in the world. Just because we, but this, this broader concern doesn't mean that we can't care about what's more local. Just because I love my country doesn't mean I can't love my city. This concern and understanding doesn't mean anything unless we act on it. We have to make the choice to use our power for others rather than over others. In fact, we expect this service for others from many people in positions of power, like doctors, teachers, parents, and elected officials. We have to choose to do the same. Now, recently, I celebrated my birthday, and I received a box of fancy French chocolates. I really wanted to eat all of them by myself. 
but my parents expected me to be mature enough and share it with my brother. I didn't. I ate them all. <laughs> Clearly, adding a digit to my age doesn't by itself do anything. I have to choose to be more mature. And shouldn't humanity make that choice as well? Thank you.